Alrighty, so um, well, good evening, good afternoon, good morning to wherever that you are. If you're just joining us, we're just getting started, so you're at the right time. How to engage in today's webinar? Um, so you have the chat function that you were using uh, to tell us your favorite dish, um, and if you have any questions, you can use the Q and A function. Um, all the way to the bottom of your screen. Um, if you don't see that, that's really okay. You can still engage with us in the chat and um, and also put your questions there if you would like to. Um, and then you're gonna get a record, you're gonna get an email um, in probably three days um, that you're gonna have the recording, the slides and any other resource links uh, that we're gonna share today. So don't worry about it. We're recording um, this webinar that, and you're gonna be able to see all of that information probably hitting in your inbox in about three days. Alrighty, so I wanted to take a few seconds to talk about Quad, and then you're probably asking, oh. what is Quad? So Quad is a very new um, community that Texas has made available for all nonprofits. And basically what you're gonna have here, you're gonna have a peer-to-peer -peer community, exclusive events, um, expert technical support. You're gonna get to know other nonprofits in your area. You're gonna access to the entire um, Texas courses catalog for free. You're also gonna have um, additional discounts um, in some of them, um, some of the products that we have in our catalog are going to be available for free as well for you. And you're going to be able to invite 10 users in your organization. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to drop um, a quick um, link in the in the chat. You're going to be able to see um, what's all about Quad. And then if you have any questions, you're uh, welcome to um, give us a um, uh, give us a call or send us an email and then we're going to be able to talk more about what but I just wanted to um, say this new uh, community that we have available in Texas to y'all. Ready? we're going to go to the next slide. So before we go to the next slide, I just want to um, first welcome everybody. Uh, my name is Joseph Garcia. I, I'm a program manager here at um, TechSoup. And in today's webinar, we're going to learn how Mobile Beacon's internet can help boost your organization and your organization's program. And we brought some of the most esteemed um, subject matter experts that we could find that are that's going to share some of their knowledge around the Mobile Beacon product, about the program, and, and you know, even have some speakers that are going to share um, how um, you, you build an internet lending program within your community. All right, so now I'm going to go ahead and just pass this on over back to you, Vanessa. Yeah, and like um, Joe was saying, in today's agenda, we're going to talk a little bit about our interactions. We're going to learn about Mobile Beacon, the donation program for uh, Mobile Beacon in TechSoup, how to request those donations, uh, the hotspot lending and community program. Uh, we're going to talk about um, some use cases, and we're going to um, do some Q&A session. Alrighty, and then need your speakers. Um, so I think like right now, um, if you guys wanna wanna talk a little bit about yourself, um, just for people to get to know you, I'll start first. So my name is Vanessa. I am a program manager here for the digital customer success team. Um, and basically what I do here in TechSoup is I, I help out organizations doing events. I help out a lot of the content that you probably see out there. It's probably I'm behind it. <laughs> um, and a lot of a lot of basically um a lot of digital um stuff that you see, I'm probably behind that. So super excited to be here with y'all and super excited to get to know you guys. Joe, do you wanna wanna start again? <laughs> I'll let you know about yourself. Sure, not a problem. So uh, my name is Joseph Garcia. Um, I'm a program. I'm the program manager for the Mobile Beacon program here at TechSoup. Um, I'm very happy to be here with you guys. And and um, yeah, I manage a few different program um, programs within our hardware team. So um, very very happy to be here. I'll go next, Joe. Thanks. Uh, this is Thomas Matson, and I. Uh, have just recently joined uh, Mobile Beacon over the last couple of months. Um, I was in uh, financial services for over 30 years, and I finally saw the light and joined a nonprofit. So uh, very happy to be here and happy to introduce uh, Mobile Beacon to many of you. And I'm Ann Young, and I work for the Santa Cruz Public Libraries. I work in the um, our library IT department. I do web development, and uh, I manage our online services. 
Hi, everyone. I'm Sarah Harbison. I'm a librarian at Santa Cruz Public Libraries, and I manage the collections, including our Lendable Tech collection. And hello, everybody. I'm Tom, as well as the other Tom <laughs> from Mobile Beacon. Uh, I cover libraries and education uh, from Mobile Beacon. I've got about 20 years of wireless experience, and I, too, saw the light and came over to a nonprofit and enjoy hearing about everybody's mission and how we can help. And with that, we're gonna go ahead and pass the reins over to Thomas Maston to just share uh, about Mobile Beacon. Thank you, Jill. Hello, everybody. Um, as I said, my name is Thomas Matson, and along with my uh, Mobile Beacon colleague, Tom Topher, we are here and happy to introduce uh, Mobile Beacon and our donation program with TechSoup. So for those that are not familiar, I'll just give you a little bit of an overview. Um, we are a uh, 501c3 organization, began 13 years ago this month, uh, created out of the belief that schools, libraries, and nonprofits accomplish uh, you know, the foundational duties that are vital to the community. Um, yet many of these organizations and the people they serve really lack the sufficient technology or access to the technology that they need. So our mission is really simple. It's helped conquer the digital divide by supporting these organizations with better, more affordable internet connectivity. And we'll get into, you know, some of the specifics as we go along, but at a high level, we help these organizations that we partner with really in three ways. We help them reach more people, we help provide more effective internet service, and we help them save money. And what's critical about the saving money piece is obviously that money can be better utilized towards the, um, towards the mission. Next slide, Joe. So why is this our mission and how do we do it? So let's first kind of go through the why. So many communities, and this will be no surprise to all of you attending, um, but many communities lack the access to high-speed internet, creating a digital divide that really limits their ability to participate in the online world. And by providing affordable internet access, we really help bridge this divide and ensure that everyone has an equal opportunity to succeed. Schools and libraries, as we know, are pillars of education and learning providing critical online resources for students, lifelong learners, and those individuals that simply don't have internet access. Healthcare organizations rely on the internet to access patient records, communicate with medical professionals, and provide telehealth services. Reliable internet access is crucial to patient quality care, especially in rural and underserved areas. And obviously what we've seen is access to high-speed internet is not only essential for modern education as it was so critical during the pandemic, but it's also become a necessary component of modern living. So how do we go about doing this? One way is through partnerships. So Mobile Beacon partners with various organizations such as technology companies, uh, foundations, government agencies to help secure funding, expand our reach, and provide additional resources to its beneficiaries. We use grants, we help to identify and offer technology access grants that provide eligible organizations with subsidized internet service and equipment. And we participate in donation programs. Again, one of the key reasons you're here today, our, te our TechSoup uh, partnership brings eligible nonprofits the ability to receive discounted hardware, further enhancing their digital capabilities. We also partner with Digital Wish, allowing individuals and organizations to donate internet service to specific nonprofits in need, directly addressing their connectivity challenges. And then we have a Connect for Success donation program ourselves, which allows individuals and organizations to donate internet service to schools and underserved communities. And lastly, this is one of our, our prouder um, accomplishments, and it's a Wi-Fi lending launch program it's an annual grant. We award over $10,000 in donated technology and internet services to two lucky organizations. And we just uh, completed that over the last couple of weeks for this year. Next slide, Joe. So let's discuss the reason you're all here today. And that's the Mobile Beacon Donation Program with TechSoup. So this program has helped literally thousands of organizations successfully bridge the digital divide and deliver the services their communities need. 
To be eligible for the Mobile Beacon Donation Program, organizations must meet the following criteria. There must be a registered 501c3 nonprofit organization here in the United States, have an active TechSoup account, which takes all of five minutes to set up, provide uh, services to underserved communities or populations, and have a need for affordable and reliable internet access. Once approved for the uh, program, eligible organizations can receive up to 11 4G mobile hotspots each fiscal year. Each hotspot includes one year of unlimited internet service for $120, which is basically $10 a month. So Tom Toe for now will walk you through uh, an overview of the program itself, including the services, costs, and steps to participate. Tom. Thanks, Tom. The, the fun part in our organization is if you just yell Tom, somebody's bound to answer. So uh, so, so like Tom Matson, I too uh, have, have joined Mobile Beacon in the last couple of months. Um, you know, 20 years of wireless experience. Um, and one of the reasons why I, I, I really love the mission of, of Mobile Beacon was the, the, the cost. You know, our service is through, through T-Mobile and it only costs $120 a year. Um, so it really helps with, with budgeting uh, and planning. Um, and as you can see on the right, uh, that is our 4G device. That's a Franklin T10. And we also have other devices available that if you, if you wanted to check our website out at mobilebeacon.org, um, we also do have other devices. We're not the tech suit, but um, we have 5G and tablets and, and even routers. Um, but just to kind of uh, cover our service, um, it is 4G through the, the nation program with, with TechSoup. Average speeds, you know, you can see here, six to eight megabits a second. It, it supports streaming, um, you know, and basically anything you need the internet for, uh, the hotspot will be fully capable of doing it. And now it is on T-Mobile's coverage. So anything if you're familiar with, there's no difference. It doesn't change uh, from a T-Mobile device to us. It's, it's gonna be the same coverage, which is great. Um, and we also have additional features, um, including the SIPA filter. So if for any reason you need to have that uh, placed on the devices, we can do that. Um, if you need usage reports of how many, if you've got a lot of devices and you just wanna see if they're being used, uh, we can provide that as well. And it, we also have a portal where if you have a device that's lost or um, if you do a lending service, and doesn't get returned, you can turn the, the data on and off so that you know, it may get returned. <laughs> All right, Joe, you can flip on to the next one. All right, so how do you get uh, the donation? So um, first thing, main thing is make sure you have the coverage in, in the area where you, where you operate. Um, and then you're gonna go to the TechSoup uh, website and, and follow the instructions there. Um, there's a URL there. I'm sure they'll have it on the resources that are sent to you, but it's also pretty easy to find through the uh, uh, products on the TechSoup website. Um, now, each location is allowed to get 11 hotspots per fiscal year, and that fiscal year runs July 1st through June 30th. And the one good thing is, too, so every, every July 1st, it renews. So if you used 11 last year, you can get 11 again this year. Um, now, there is a $15 uh, admin fee per device um, that, that is payable to TechSoup. And once you place that order with TechSoup, you'll get a uh, fulfillment instruction email um, that will walk you through how to place an order with us, um, with Mobile Beacon. However, if you don't want to do that or if you have some questions, you can send it over to us. Our information will be posted on here, um, but also if you if you want to send it to sales at mobilebeacon.org, um, we can take the information and, and process that order for you. All right, Joe. Now, the other cool thing that TechSoup offers, um, so if you've got, let's say, five locations or branches, um, five or more, and you want to make a bigger order, we have what we call a bulk order. Um, the advantage of the bulk order is, is what I call, the, and Joe calls, the, the white glove service. Um, essentially, TechSoup will handle a lot of logistics uh, with, with Mobile Beacon for you. Um, and the main big advantage for you is lower shipping and handling costs um, and the, the fact that you know that everything's going to be handled for you. Um, the way it works is, you know, Every location would have to be registered with TechSoup, um, so that you know everybody's available for the, uh, the the discounted devices. And once you be able to gather the information, you'll send it over to TechSoup. They will work with us, take the payment, and be able to get your your order out the door, and, and you'll be using it. All right. So with that being said, let's 
go to the next slide. And we're going to hand this over to our library partners with uh, with Anne. Hi, yeah, this is Anne at the Santa Cruz Public Library and Sarah and I are going to talk just a little bit about how um, we're using the hotspots here in Santa Cruz. Um, you can go on to the next slide. Yeah. So like most libraries, we started off actually quite a few years ago with putting in public Wi-Fi in all of our branches, and which was and was and still is very heavily used. But we realized that we were still not meeting the needs of um, some of our some of the people in our community. Um, for one group, it was just difficult for them to get to the buildings themselves, which is where the public Wi-Fi was offered, obviously. Um, we also have areas in our county that are fairly rural and particularly up in the Santa Cruz Mountains where they um, either don't have Wi-Fi at all or the Wi-Fi that they do have is just their Internet access is extremely slow due to the geography. And we also knew that a, a certain segment of our population is low income and that they just simply couldn't afford to put uh, to get an internet connection at their home and to have Wi-Fi within their home. We were seeing kids in libraries using our Wi-Fi and public internet PCs to do their homework. And um, we thought it would be helpful to all of these groups of people if we could allow them to check out the internet and take it home and use it there for, for whatever their needs. So we started off small because we weren't sure how exactly it was going to work. And um, now, I think last year, we've, we have 10 branches, and last year we ended up maxing out our um, 11 hotspots per year uh, for each branch. So it's been going, it's been going well. And I'm going to turn it over to Sarah to have her talk about the details of our lending program. Thanks, Anne. Uh, hi, everyone. I'm Sarah, a librarian with Santa Cruz Public Libraries. I manage the collections here, which tradi traditionally has been um, books, DVDs, audiobooks, CDs, and it now includes what we call our um, Library of Things, um, which is non-traditional library items. So we have telescopes, we have ukuleles, um, and we now have lendable tech, which includes these hotspots that we um, offer through TechSoup and Mobile Beacon. And as Anne had indicated, um, they have been overwhelmingly well received. And we started small and then saw the demand really increase. We uh, saw them checked out all the time and a rather lengthy holds list accumulating for these. Um, so we have been adding more and more in order to meet demand. Um, we've got approximately 200 hotspots now that are available to check out with the library card. We have cataloged these and put them in our library catalog so that our patrons can come in and use their library card to place a hold, um, check their availability. They'll be notified um, when a hotspot is ready for them to pick up. And um, they do check out for three weeks or 21 days, and they are renewable as long as no one else is waiting. And just recently, now that we've finished adding the last batch of 110 hotspots, we don't have a waiting list anymore, which is just absolutely incredible and exciting for us. And so we do have some hotspots that are available um, for same day pickup at a branch. Um, and patrons who have these checked out are not are now able to renew them so they can keep them for another 21 days, um, which has had a really positive impact on a lot of these people and families who otherwise don't have Internet at home. Um, it's really hard to plan um, when you'll be able to have Internet access at home if you've got meetings or perhaps a job interview scheduled. Um, so it's really great to have a larger quantity of these available so that um, they're available right away for folks. Um, so in order to check them out to patrons, we got a little creative. Um, 
They come in a nice cardboard box, which really withstands like one to two checkouts from our patrons before that box gets um, pretty used. So we looked at Amazon and found some small plastic boxes with a locking lid, um, which holds the hotspot itself and its charging cable. And then not pictured here in that little picture is we've got a bilingual quick start guide that library staff created. So if someone has never used a hotspot before, they may not know that it needs to be powered on, that there's a password. So we address all of these things in our um, quick start guide. Um, so that's been very helpful. Um, some of the hotspots that we have, we have um, bundled with a Chromebook and placed them in a nice um, shoulder carrying bag. And then we've also placed a headset and a mouse as well in that bag. And that those have really met the need of those patrons who don't have internet at home and they don't have a device that is actually fully usable um, to get online. So those are very popular and we do have wait lists for those still. So we're, we're working on reducing those wait lists. Um, but it's been great to be able to pair that Chromebook with a hotspot. So as you imagine, when people check these out using their library card, sometimes they don't come back. Um, just as it happens with many things that people check out and we understand that, but once they have been checked out for, um, or once they become overdue on a patron's account for over a month, I think we wait at least six weeks, um, we can go into the dashboard um, that Mobile Beacon provides and we can turn the data off on those hotspots. And it has been somewhat successful in patrons then returning it to the library. And, um, <laughs> so that then we can turn it back on and then make it accessible to other people who have been waiting. Um, we do get usage reports, which are um, always fun to look at and read and see how heavily uh, these hotspots are being used. Um, and then there is an option for content filtering. We don't use that here at the library, but that is something that we can do. I should mention something that we do when we first get these is that this is what Anne does actually I can't take any credit for it but she'll go in and she'll change the default um, password into the settings um, because we have had we learned that at the beginning that some people will then go in and figure out what that password is and then change it to something that we don't know so we've We've had a lot of really interesting things happen. <laughs> We've learned a lot of lessons. We've learned, and, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, it's been overwhelmingly successful. Um, we have done a few direct loans of hotspots to um, some families and students who have enrolled in one of our grant-funded literacy efforts called Recover and Thrive. So they do some work at the library um, in person with librarians and certified teachers, and then they can take the hotspot home if they need it and still be able to access that content and do the, um, the work that they do at home um, using those hotspots. So yeah, as I mentioned, the community feedback has been overwhelmingly positive. We've heard from patrons that they have participated in online job interviews using our hotspots that they wouldn't otherwise have been able to do, um, perhaps in a quiet, secure location. So that's really heartwarming to hear these success stories. Um, and yeah, we do, we hear a lot from our um, community members about how these hotspots can be used differently. Um, we've heard from senior, low-income seniors in particular who have borrowed these hotspots and it really is their way to communicate online with friends and family. Um, if they need to interact with local government, um, this allows them to do that as well. So next we've got some other creative ways that we've used these hotspots. So I'll turn it back over to Anne. Yeah, so once once we kind of had the lending program going, um, our outreach department started coming up with all sorts of 
really creative ideas for how they thought that the, they could use the hotspots and how they would be useful. So I'm just kind of sharing three use cases here. Um, in, in every case, they've used them to um, go out into the community to different locations and to register new library cards, people who don't have cards yet, and also to update cards where people maybe have a card that they had from 10 years ago and um, it has expired obviously. And so it gets, um, they can update it right there on the spot so that they've got a card that they can use and 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 make people aware of all sorts of uh, resources, online resources that the library offers that, that all they need is that library card. Um, so uh, one place that they go to is the Homeless Garden Project Farm. This is an actual working farm that's used uh, for job training for people who are experiencing homelessness. And the farm itself doesn't have any, any Wi-Fi. So what the outreach department did was they went out there and they took uh, Wi-Fi hotspots and some laptops, and they were able to introduce the people who are working there to some of our online resources that would help them uh, in addition to the work they're getting on the farm, that would help them with um, resume building, interview skills, um, getting certifications, and taking some online courses. These are all things that we offer through our website that they, they can get access to uh, using the hotspots. Uh, we also have a library bookmobile, which has been lovingly named Kermit due to its very shocking green color. <clears throat> and Kermit likes to go out into all sorts of festive community events. Uh, he goes to parades and farmers markets and can, can be seen all around the community. He carries a, a trailer with a small collection of items in it. So wherever Kermit goes, uh, a hotspot follows and uh, items can be checked out from the trailer right there at farmers markets or parades or wherever Kermit is to people who are um, who come up and and uh, show some interest in the in the library and talking about it. One recent um, we recently had a um, event at a downtown farmers market. We are planning the construction of a new downtown library building and. In fact, it's going to go on the very site of the current downtown farmer's market. So Kermit was at the farmer's market and was able to use the Wi-Fi hotspot to answer people's questions, bring up FAQs, uh, do some research on questions that people had regarding the construction of the new building and uh, the status of the farmer's market. So it was really useful there. And then thirdly, um, Outreach goes to Janus of Santa Cruz County, which is a substance <clears throat> um, a rehab center. And what they do there is they will take a small collection of materials and those materials, they do sort of a, what they call a lobby service. And they take those materials to the building and um, can people can check out books right there again on the spot. And that the staff actually enjoys doing that too. The staff at the center also likes to check out materials there as well. So those are just um, three sort of examples of different uses of hotspots in addition to lending them out to our patrons. Well, the great Anne, thank you. And, and Sarah, the terrific use cases that um... I think a lot of us can relate to certainly. And, you know, as we look at some of the other organizations that we support, there's probably hundreds of different types of use cases, a lot of overlap, obviously you think about how each one of us use the internet, um, but there's so many different variable ways that, that people use them, organizations use them, uh, everything from, you know, keeping field staff connected with mobile access, signing up volunteers or accepting donations anytime, anywhere, um, as Ian mentioned, Kermit on the road, you know, uh, but creating backup internet source as well, you know, so, you, so the office doesn't go dark, um, becoming a hotspot for free internet access in your community, providing mobile devices to staff to implement work at home or family friendly policies. I mean, it's just, you know, the ideas go on and on. And obviously a whole host of virtual services, including events, webinars, 
uh, education, telehealth. Um, so it's just, uh, again, as, as you think about all the different use cases each one of us have in our lives, um, what we are trying to do each and every day is just sort of extend that reach, give you all the uh, the tools that you need to give access to your to your members, to your to the people you support. Um, and that's that's our mission. That's what we try to do each and every day. So um, I think, Joe, this might be the last slide. I, I mean, I hope it was a valuable overview. We obviously uh, appreciate everybody's time and um, certainly look forward to supporting you and your your wonderful missions and and your questions, of course. Hi, everybody. Yes, we do have some questions coming. Uh, I think Helen asked us if we purchase the hotspot today, we get renew in July or next November. So I can I can take that one. So the TechSoup codes uh, renew every every July. Our service is the 12 month based on when you sign up. So if you did sign up for today is the 28th, um, it would go until the 27th uh, next year. Um, she's got to ask us here, do you use the default password for these hotspots or do you assign your own unique or temporary password? Um, like I think Sarah mentioned earlier, we. We made the mistake the first time they went, our small batch went out of um, not resetting the password and we left it at the admin. We just didn't weren't thinking about that and had had some patrons get in and actually change the password. So we learned from that and um, we now change the passwords to a to a more secure password before we let them go out to the public. And she also has a follow-up question regarding um, does mobile beacon have a way to change the password? For example, if you guys don't remember um what do you guys use? Um Thomas, do you know um if you guys are able to retweet that password and then change it in your system? Yeah, so we have a, a, a full tech support team too as well um that can assist with any questions, uh, any any problems that you have with that with a hotspot. Um, so we have in-house, uh, they're in the office, uh, the main office, there's a lot of them, um, and that's their main role, so. And Danica on our team there just answered as well. That's him. Um, Kim asked um, for the Library of Santa Cruz, do you have anything that patrons signed to say that they are using it for education? Yeah, I can take this one. Um, that's a great question. And no, we don't. Um, we don't um, ask what patrons are using it for. So they check it out and they can use it for whatever they like. And um, as I mentioned too, we don't do the content filtering. Um, that's just part of our internet use policy here um, at our library. But I know some libraries do do that and might have some loan agreements as well, uh, but we don't. Thanks. For the mobile beacon team, Francisco asked, can you use it outside of the US? The hotspot. No, it is strictly US. There's parts of uh, Puerto Rico, I believe it, it, it is accessible, but it's it's uh, a United States offering only. I think Kim um, asked a little bit about the coverage, um, and she's asking if there are any dead spots in your um, in your area. I don't know if you guys want to talk a little bit more about the coverage and how how you're able to um, figure it out if if the hotspot is going to be available in your coverage area. So we we utilize uh, T-Mobile uh, lines. So basically, you could look at a T-Mobile map um, at their four G and five G coverage. And it should provide you, um, I think someone is just posting the uh, the map. Um, but that's, it's a good, I guess, beginning point. And we've had some folks that have had luck with 5G and no luck with 4G and vice versa. Um, so it really does kind of depend, um, but the maps are continually updated. <clears throat> We have a general question here as well. It's like, um, um, I believe that we, we need a little bit of refresher on how many hotspots we can get. <laughs> um, and then also, um, if we want more than the allotment, is there a way that we can get more? 
Absolutely. So the TechSoup program is 11 per fiscal year, which is um, July to June, July 1st to June 30th. Um, but there is no limit. So basically with the TechSoup program, um, it reduced to a $15 handling charge. Um, but you're able to buy as many as you'd like, um, which they can be done depending on the number of them can be through TechSoup or they could be through Mobile Beacon directly. I see. And I can add to that too, Tom. So if you like say somebody has one location and they need 20, they can get the 11 uh, through the TechSoup program and then reach out with, with us. Um, like our information will be posted and uh, you know, we can help you out on another, the other nine, getting that added to the order and whatnot, if, uh, if you need help as well. But you, you should have the option if you follow the instructions to add more um, and the total will just come off that 11. And one thing that I wanna note um, on that as well is that the 11 will be at a, it's a donated product. So you will just pay the $15 administrative fee to TechSoup. But if you do go beyond the 11 devices and you order additional devices in the fiscal year from Mobile Beacon, that you will be um, there will be a uh, cost associated with the price of the device. Oh, and we have another general question: is about um, uh, what kind of device can you use with the um, with the hotspot? Can you just uh, use any device that you that you have? Or does it need any specific specs for the mobile uh, for the mobile beacon hotspot to work? As, as long as it can connect to Wi-Fi, um, you should be pretty good. I can't guarantee every single device that's out there, um, but as long as it can connect and support Wi-Fi, um, you know, obviously your tablets, phones, um, anything you know that, that needs to get access to the internet that has a way of picking up a Wi-Fi signal. We have another question for the Mobile Beacon team. Um, Kitty asks us, can this take the place of regular internet service? It could, you know, the caveat is because it has a lithium battery, you really can't keep it plugged in at all times. Um, we've had we've had some interesting um, uh, suggestions from people. I'm not sure we would necessarily uh, authorize them, but people use things like timers and we'll turn them off during the evening and turn them back on during the day so it's not constantly, you know, uh, feeding electricity into the device. But like any other lithium battery, if it's continually plugged in, it, it has the potential to cause a fire. So um, but other than that, you you really could, as long as it's, again, not, not plugged in at all times. Awesome. Um, we have a question for the Santa Cruz Library. Um, is there a rental be for students or any other um, any other of your audience? Do you guys have any uh, fees? No, we don't charge um, to borrow these devices or any of our devices. Um, the one thing I will note though is we do charge a replacement fee. If one doesn't come back, it's automatically charged to the patron account. And for the hotspot, I believe we charge uh, a $25 replacement fee um, just to cover that $15 um, charge for replacing it for getting a new one and then the box and um, staff time but no fee to borrow and, and, and I've seen on from other libraries um, all the chargers there's a, you know if you, if you leave the forget the charger or lose it there's a, you know $15 to replace that um, I've seen that on on the uh, the, the agreement uh, when you take it out. So, yeah, it's, and that's that's fully up to you. We don't we don't you know your your, your decisions on that. Um, we don't we don't really have a say in that. So if you decide that you do or don't, that's that's entirely up to your decision making. The other thing, Vanessa, just I'll add for the question a few minutes ago, or a few minutes, a few seconds ago about the. Um, sort of 24 seven powering, if you will, of a hotspot. So while that would not work uh, for the reasons I described, we do have routers. We've got several different routers that are available uh, that could be plugged in all the time. It's not through the TechSoup program, but they are available uh, through us directly. 
And we're going to make sure that um, that link for the routers, um, it's on the email that we're going to send out um, with the recording and the slides. So everybody is able to see if you are in need of that router, you're able to see that on Mobile Speakers website. So don't worry about it. We're going to share that link as well. We have a question from Helen for the Mobile Beacon team. How many devices can be connected to one hotspot? So that, that will vary, um, but typically it's between 20 and 30 sort of simultaneous um, connections before you start right. to really deg degrade. Go ahead, Tom. Yeah, the, 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 at the Tom's, uh, for, the more you add to it, the, the less the bandwidth is. So it, it can, can it support that? Yes. Will everybody have a, a great experience on it if you have up to the 15? Uh, probably not, especially if you're doing a lot on them and gaming and Netflix and stuff like that. So just like anything else, and I'm sure your Wi-Fi at home uh, experiences the same problem. And Danica just chimed in. She said up to uh, around 15 devices. And just like Tom said, depending on what you're doing, you know, if you're streaming, if you're playing Netflix or, or YouTube, it depends on what, what, what uh, the activity that you're doing. We also have another question regarding um, the um, the internet service as well. It's like, will this support a large Zoom meeting? I'm sorry, I didn't hear that. The, what oh, what yeah. was the question? No sorry. Um, they're asking if the um, the hotspot can support a large Zoom meeting. Like for example, like a I'm on one right now. Oh, they're asking us to um, go back to the slide about the $15 admin fee. Um, maybe we can just show that real quick. Sure. It's right here, cost yeah. per device. So mm -hmm. There's going to be a $15 admin fee, which be, would be collected from TechSoup. Um, once that order has been filled with TechSoup, um, you will then receive a fulfillment email, which will give you further instructions on how to go ahead and purchase the um, annual service and also how to make payments to Mobile Beacon for the shipping and handling as well. Alrighty, so I believe those are all the questions that we have. We are going to do something super fun. So I'm going to let Joe take it away. <laughs> Yay, get ready for fun. Well, uh, you know, I, first, I just want to thank both Mobile Beacon and Santa Cruz Public Library for their time today. It was fantastic. And um, this next section is, is, you know, something that we've never really done with Mobile Beacon, but they have generally, generously offered um, to raffle a device, a hotspot device today for our participants. And um, this will also cover the year of service, and it'll also cover the shipping and handling charges as well. Um, how many participants do we have, Vanessa? We have 51 right now. Woo, all right, so 51. Let's see, we're gonna go with the number, who is number nine, Vanessa? Oh, let's check it out. Oh, give me one second. Let me go ahead and then make my screen a little bit bigger. Lucky number nine. Let's check. I think I have Brian Miller right here. Oh, there you go. It's from Mobile Beacon. There you go. Well, let's run it again. <laughs> let's run it again because Brian... <laughs> Brian already has one. <laughs> How about number 36? Okay. 30. Let's see. 36. Let's check. One second. Drum roll. Second. Drum roll. <laughs> and I have here. Oh, let's see. Let's check. Sorry, sorry. It's a little bit. It's a little bit. Um slow here in my system but it's gonna be uh kim priest there you go right here 
Kim Priest? Yes. Perfect. So congratulations, Kim. Um, you are going to be able to try a mobile beacon hotspot and, you know, see, just explore all the different ways that it could really benefit your organization. Um, one thing that I do want to note is that it would have to be set up through your organization through mobile beacon. Um, we will be sending a fulfillment email in the next two to three days with how to, how to um, collect your, your raffle prize. So congratulations. And thank you. Thank you again to TechSoup, not TechSoup, thank you to Mobile Beacon for making this fun moment happen. Congrats. And thank you, Joe, for, for organizing all this for you and Vanessa. I really appreciate it. Well, yeah, of course. And uh, for being here. And thank you guys for all the organizations that join us. Um, we're super excited to have you here. And what we're going to see you in the next one. <laughs> Thank you, everybody. And if there are any questions, please feel free to reach out to um, either of the Toms, or you can reach out to sales at mobilebeacon.org, and they will be more than happy to help you and assist you with any questions you may have around the program and how we can help um, service your nonprofit to that next level.